what brought home to you the difference between Norwich and Manchester United the most? Was there one thing when you made the move up that you thought, wow, this, this, this is different gravy, this is different? Was there one well, thing that stood out? For a start, the, the difficult one was walking into the dressing room and seeing the likes of Brian Robson, Norman Whiteside, Gordon Strachan, Jesper Olsen. And of course, I'm sitting next to Paul McGrath, who, who after training with him for just two days, I was like, oh my gosh, am I, am I supposed to be replacing him? Because he is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, unfortunately, he was dogged with injuries, Paul, and, um, and didn't maybe play enough. But, you know, went to Aston Villa, you know, trained on a bike, and I think he won four times player of the year. I mean, but I think it was the moment of, of playing for Manchester. There's no such thing as a friendly for Man U. None. Everybody wants to beat you. And the enormity of it from back pages to front pages was the increase, the demand on you was instant. And I think that is the, the big thing that a lot of players have to come to terms with very quickly. You can quite easily swallow you up. Um, unfortunately for myself, uh, I managed to thought, well, you know, I've, I've worked 10 years to get here and I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it as my, my best shot and I'm going to not be you know, put off by it or daunted by it. Let's give it a crack because it's been a long, long road to get here and I was determined to, to try and see it through. What gives you the belief? As you say, you're, you're alongside real men then. Robsons, McGrath, Whiteside, even though he was only young. What gives you the belief that you belong? Is, is there a moment? Is there a time? <laughs> is, there a, is there a moment in time? Well, it was, it, was, it was tough because it was the early years of Sir Alex, of course. And... Um, and of course, the big thing for all Manchester at the time was that we have to win the league. You know, that was pressed upon you very, very quickly that this is, you know, it was something like 25 years, 26 years before we, we'd won a bit like Liverpool now, you know. Who would have thought that they'd gone 30 years without winning it this year, you know. So, now I think, it, and it was tough, you know, we, we, weren't, we weren't the Man United team that, that certainly... You know, the difference in the team that Sir Alex put together after a while. And given the time, you know, I talk about the 94 team, you know, with Cantona and Hughes and Ince and Keane and Robson and, and, and Kanchelskis and Giggs and Pallister. It, it was a great team, very, very a great team. And in 95, it was gone. It was ripped up, mm. you know. It, the, new kid, the new kids on the block had arrived. And we all thought then, Wow, do we, is Sir Alex, does he know what he's doing here? I mean, selling Hughes and Kanchelskis and Ince and, and bringing in the likes of Beckham and Scholes and Butt is like, and the Nevilles. It was like, wow, you know, but um, it was, uh, uh, oh, looking back on it, Jeff, I, I, was, I, was, I was determined and I, and I really can say this, that I enjoyed every minute of it. And of course, there was some um, huge ups and winning things and there was some, Huge disappointments as well, but um, the, the overall, it was it was a wonderful nearly ten years. Not just because of what you won and, and lifting that trophy alongside uh, Brian Robson the first time in in twenty six years, you contributed to some of the most iconic moments in the Premier League. Your headers against Sheffield Wednesday uh, has gone down, gone down in folklore, and I'm sure that's the. Yeah. The, the, the one that probably, most meant probably now as a personal level, probably the highlight because everybody associates them two headers as that, that one is the league, Jeff. We still had five or six games to play, but it was probably the turning point. You know, we went, I think we went three days later to Coventry and Dennis Irwin played a 1 2 and smashed one in from 25 yards. Nobody talks about it. we win 1 0, but them two mm. headers basically because of. When it was, I mean, of course, it was Fergie time. How, how often did we see that, you know? And it was, you know, six minutes in when I, when I got the winner. And, of course, to see Kiddo and, and Sir Alex jumping around the pitch is, you know, arguably, arguably the, the highlight. I mean, I had many, many great times lifting trophies and all the rest of it. But that for a personal, a personal one. The number of people who still tap me on the show and say, I remember that. I remember where I was when he scored two, well, twice against Sheffield Wednesday. Quite remarkable. And the, and the ironic thing, Chris Woods, 
Chris Woods. I was going for dinner with Chris Woods and his wife. Um, it was the Norwich. It was the Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper that day, because I'd, I, I, because I'd been with, I've been, and I'm sure to this day he threw the first one. And I always said to him, "Could you not have scored that first one?" Um, yeah, he was. Uh, he was staying with us. He was staying with us because of, I lived next door to him in Norwich um, for many years. So quite remarkable. How hard was the decision to leave? Oh. And I and I and I have to say I left I left in a bit of a huff as well, which which was a regret now, you know. Because of the cup final? Uh the cup final. And of course Trevor Francis jumped all over it and um rang me practically immediately. And it was probably the way of Sir Alex saying, Look, you know, go out go out at the top, you know, or whatever. And in that respect I'm pleased. I I was even till I was 36, I know I didn't play in the cup final. I still managed to play something like 40 games that year, you know. Mm. So I didn't want to become a, but a bit of a bit player, a bit part player, you know, after captain in the club for five years. But I still regret, um, I, didn't, I didn't regret leaving because I had another great couple of years at Birmingham. And that probably was the reason why I ended up back at Birmingham, managing Birmingham. Um, was them two years I had as a player. And that prolonged me. But certainly leaving, it dawns on you to leave. Of course, you were club captain as well. So you have to organise an awful lot on and off the pitch. And I, I certainly recall, Sky, we're very indebted to you to helping us out when you won the title, when uh, it was Villa was chasing you, wasn't it? And you didn't win yeah. the title. You won the title without playing that year. Yeah, without playing on the, on the Sunday afternoon. Just, just to be saying that, you'd be the captain. I get a phone call from Sir Alex. I get a phone call from Sir Alex one afternoon. He said, uh, are you in the house? And I said, yeah. He says, can I, can I call in and have a cup of tea? Of course. I said to Jan, Jan, you better get the best china out. The boss is coming. You know, he's coming for a cup of tea. So you can see uh, she was in a tizzy like I was. I said, well, I wonder what's wrong. What do you want to come to the house for? It's a bit unprecedented. And he came into the house and just... Uh, and sat down and and um, and over a cup of tea and a biscuit said, "Listen, I want you to be the new captain." And I knew it was like, "Wow, wow, how do you think?" I was like, "No problem, absolutely, bring it on." But I do think, I think, I do think he came to have a look at where I lived and how I lived and where I was. You know, it was just maybe a little right. bit. I don't know, don't know the fact or that's where he did. But that little personal touch stays with you. So things like that over. 40 years of his management to come and really tell you over a cup of tea in your house was was uh, was terrific, I have to tell you. And then, of I course, mean... you you said you said, "Can we bring a camera?" <laughs> that day, and we and we never expected Oldham to be fair. Oldham were trying to avoid relegation and uh, the turnover Aston Villa. And you said, "Can it, are the players coming to you?" I don't know how they ended up coming to my house, by the way, but. Players. You, you all, hang on, hang on. You all live near. You all live nearby each other, didn't you? And well, you lived yeah. in quite quite a secluded close. No, no. I, I, I. Well, listen. A lot lived in South Manchester, but we didn't have mobile phones in them days. So what wasn't a text to say meet round, but it sort of went round like the jungle wildfire. And then of course you, when, when, when you were wet behind the ears, <laughs> taking advantage of me. Can I come round and bring a little camera? I, I said there'd be a, bank, said there'd be a small too, truck. <laughs> by the way, them pictures still were the, the party. was uh, <laughs> terrific. There's just one thing before we close, and, and I don't want to close. No matter how long we've known each other, I always uh, enjoy talking to you and listening to you. When you spoke just now, uh, again, probably because you're upbringing, you're a very respectful person, and you talk about the greats in management. You talk about Guardiola, you talk about Sir Alex, etc. Jurgen Klopp, you mentioned a couple of times, but were you, like me, somewhat surprised at Jurgen and disappointed, if I'm being completely honest, that it took him until lockdown to realise that Gary Neville has an opinion <laughs> on everything? <laughs> he's already just realised. Come on, Jurgen. You see, he's not. He's not. He's not ahead of the game, Jeff. <laughs> You've only just realised now that Gary's not got an opinion. Back in the day, we used to call him Red Nev. You know, he's, he's, he's socialist news now. He always, and by the way, can I tell you something, Jeff, on him? He always had an opinion. He had an opinion when he was 19 years old. 
and 20 year olds you know he always had the one who had the, the, the mouthpiece and about him and, and to be fair to him though there's somebody who not blessed with the greatest ability probably not had as much ability as his, as his brother but by God, he got the best out of himself. And it's no surprise to see the career he had and also of what he's doing on the TV now because, you know, he works his socks off and, and, and gets the best out of himself. And uh, talking about TV pundits now, he can give himself a, a pat on the back. He's, he's got to the very top and he got to the very top as a player. And um, I, you can only say well done to the kid. Smash him. Smash it. Listen, great to talk to you, as always. Um, stay safe. Stay safe, Tom, and, very best. and you. Yeah, so to you, Jan, and all the family. And um, all the best as the, as the season resumes. Thank you. And um, good luck, pal. Thank you very much, Jeff. Good to see you again. Take Thank care. You. Take care.